So welcome back to the second episode in this mini series on routing. And in this one, we're going to look at taking what is a good routing and a really solid starting point and making it really good. And additionally, going through what problems we might encounter as we're going and how you might make those changes. Really understanding that there's no such thing in a kind of big picture routing as one small change. Everything has knock on effects. So I did really like this one as a starting point. I thought we had the high plateau working well, ravine holes working really well, and I did build some holes. You're going back to an earlier, you're looking at an earlier version of the file where I'm just playing around with the routing so you can see this uh, in without being distracted by the holes themselves. Um, so I built one, two, and three, and I got to the fourth hole, and one of the things I would do would be to place down roughly how big the greens are. So this one, we're looking at like 33 yards and it was going to be you know, par three looking this way. And you then think about where do you want your playable surfaces? So you want probably a little bunker here. There's going to be some planting in and around here. But because it's downhill three, we're probably going to have some runoff behind and probably going to want an apron around about here as well. So I then started looking at this and thinking, I'm not sure if I've got enough space because if eight is having a green going 50 is probably a little bit big, but if eight's having a green that's like there, that's suddenly coming very close to here and we can't really plant between the two. So that's going to be really tight and we're going to have to work hard to manage that. And we could pull eight back, but actually this bit of ravine's really cool. That's one of our big features we want to utilize. This, like this sort of par three could kind of go anywhere. We could shunt it this way, but then that's really short and we're still kind of dealing with the same issue just around these two tee boxes. So there's that that's playing in my mind. I then got to thinking about how this hole would function around the others. So once you start looking at eight green, you start thinking about, well, 14 to 15, we're gonna to have to walk across here. That's not necessarily ideal. I don't really mind it, I don't think it's a deal breaker, but we're gonna to have to have a way there's a little path through. And you have to think about this as well. So three to four would be fine. Four to five would be a little walk. We'd also have to, in addition to trying to find some planting, we're gonna have to find a way to walk behind here as well and think, imagine if you were walking around here and a shot got hit at you. That's kind of awkward. And I know it's a video game, that sort of thing doesn't matter, but we're trying to get as close to real life as we possibly can. So with all these things, I kind of started questioning whether four was gonna work as a whole or if it would be better if it was removed. Now, there are other aspects that I didn't like. Uh, additionally, on the walking front, well, we were going from 9 to 10 like this and then 13 to 14, so we we're crossing in front of there. Now, I had also noticed, though, that 13 had this long downhill running approach, and I was going to play 14 as a long four that also had a running approach. So there was kind of a, a really easy out here, and this was the first change to make, which was to make 13 the short four, and make 10 the long four. And I think on the first version of the plot you saw in episode one, this actually had already been done, but that was a change that happened around about now. Um, so that made a bit more sense for me because it's far easier to cross these walking paths than it is to go in front of a T. Now, beyond that, I never really loved 10 and 11. So this was a later change then. And thinking 10 was okay, we could play down to this, although, 14 and 10 are pretty tight and running in parallel. We've got a lot of parallel holes and that's something I tend to try to break up, but 9, 14, 10, kind of all running the same way is something I'd like to avoid. Additionally, five runs in the same direction. So you've got quite a few that are doing the same sort of thing. So what I did first though was then, but that's something that's playing on my mind. The first thing, though, was to go, well, actually, you know what? Four, I don't think can work. So we're going to move that, and we found a better spot for it. So actually, it's above 17. So we're going to move it to the back nine. And we'll look at our scorecard. That works pretty nicely. Suddenly, we've got a really balanced front and back. OK, back nine, slightly shorter. But this works. We can deal with that. So happy enough with that for the moment. Um, we're now going 3-5-5-3, three, which is pretty quirky, but I'm okay with that. Um, we still keep our back-to-back -back fives. That's that's all good. Um, front nine, we're also successfully spreading out this 150 to 143. 
which was something that was bothering me because we'd had two short holes very early on and we'd had a short par four in the middle and a par five. It all felt like that could be, imagine if you laid up on the par five, you've got partial like partial wedge, flop shot, flick wedge, slash nine iron, flick wedge, downhill pitching wedge. Like you kind of want to vary that a little bit more, I think. Now, clearing out our measure tools for a second, that doesn't necessarily solve every issue. And I said at the start that you never make one single change in isolation. So moving 17, that works really nicely. I think you go from the green to the tee up here, you play back across. It's a good way of using the space. Our three seventeenths tend to work quite nicely. This is a cool little green site just above two. There's enough space for it to work and it brings you back into this. I also felt I, I wanted one more hole on this kind of flatter portion. So that, that all works so far. However, when building out three and making the screen, I then realized that the real value of four wasn't necessarily as a connector hole. It was introducing you to this ravine visually without being right on top of the ravine. So if we go from three to four, first of all, that's a long walk of 170 yards whilst walking past two greens and a couple of tees. That's something I don't really love. Um, but if we go to four, and the first time you see the ravine, you're hitting directly over it, and it's kind of come out of nowhere because when approaching this green, you can't really see it. That to me feels all just a, a little bit sudden. So I didn't love that change. And I still like four as a whole, but the way it sat, and we talked about cadence in the first video, and like how it feels the round evolves, this felt completely wrong to me. So that caused a real issue for me. I was thinking about this for about uh, looking at it on and off for probably a couple of days, trying to piece together what I would do, um, because I knew that this wasn't working for me and I wasn't comfortable. And if I'm not confident in something, I can't really go for the routing. Now, then the next change I had was I, I kind of saw nine was OK as a whole, but it does feel very tight. Um, and 10, I just had nothing for. It's just a long uphill, well, not long, but an uphill par four. There weren't really very many features. I just wasn't really liking this hole as it was. It was really just a connector to get back to 11. And given that we were so compressed in here, one of the things that I decided to do was delete nine. And we moved 10, so or the new nine, that is, that we were playing back up this way. And I felt if you have an area of land that you don't really like, let's just get through it quickly. And so if this area of the land is doing nothing for me in the way that I had it, well, let's just move move past it as quickly as we can. And actually, looking up here, I saw, well, you know what, that can work. It's a gently uphill tee shot. We can lower some of this and that will work. A little right to left camber. There was a good green site here. You would kind of see it off the first tee. So we'd gain another one of those kind of flatter holes, which was something I wasn't getting with either the previous nine or 10. So although there was a transition up to it, you then had a flatter approach. So that would feel like a nice way of linking the two back. That does mean we've got one hole left over though. Now, about this time, I kind of came up with the solution to this one. And I was constantly going, well, if I went off three, where could I go? Would I go back to here? was an option but actually that would keep me on this higher plateau for the front of the route uh, front nine for the majority we could then work our way back down here and come at this area this way then go around that loop but we want to introduce our big feature early so i really do want to keep four around here so i discarded that idea um questioned whether i'd go up this way and try to work it back but there's no way of working it back so that was quickly discarded what did change this though was I did realize that actually what I can do is just reroute these so that four plays in this corridor, five plays in this corridor, six plays down here. So what I did first was actually move four. Let's call it somewhere around here. Uh, and moved seven back in the opposite direction, keeping the same. I was really just looking at green sites. You can always manipulate the T's later, but the green sites were the ones I'd found. Um, I then turned six around. So we've got a par three going over there, seems to fit nicely. And five goes back around this way. So, so far, on that seemed 
really neat as a solution. I was quite happy with that. And I just needed to find that one short par four somewhere or something to go on the back nine or the front nine. We're down to 17 holes at this point. Um, my big concern with the previous fourth, I, it's not too far. I think that's an okay walk. We'd be introducing the ravine gently because you're playing over it, but it's nowhere near in play. Um, and then you'd have it on the backdrop of this hole. And actually, I think that can work quite nicely. Six plays over, that works. Far, uh, oh yeah, we have to then reorder these two. So we then play over it again. This one, I'm, I'm really at this stage upset that I'm going to have to lose this hole because I really liked having a green banked here. Fairway going up here and you're playing as close to it as you can for that sort of angle. I thought we could do something really good off that one. Plus it had great lighting and that's always helpful. Whereas this kind of feels a bit more filler and we're going to have to do some work with that hole really. The seventh actually I'd argue works better though. We're coming at this over this ravine at more of an angle which is going to be interesting. We can play off that. So definitely an improvement at this stage. Um, we then though have to find this extra hole somewhere and in looking at the scorecard we've lost a par four so we're looking at slotting a par four back in could put a three in but actually if there's a three it's got to go on the front nine don't want to put a five in anywhere i don't think i've got space for it and looking at the distances three eight six four eight six four six five four twenty I, I kind of think like we need something in the 420 or sub 400 realm. Um, 12 can always go longer. We've got a lot of space to play with that. But um, I kind of felt like we needed a short par four somewhere. As you can see with 12, that could play anything. Like there's got so much room there. Um, I then started looking at where I could put that hole. And the front nine, I quickly realized is just a complete no go. So we can't put anything here. Um, we can't put we could probably fit a par three in there but again is it like is it placeholder and the answer was probably yes we also already have like a lot of par threes in close proximity but that was an option could we put a par three down there and that's kind of making the most of this little ravine again but again it came close to infringing on 11 or it was going to be 12 so we're probably leaving that at the moment didn't like this land so that's where our extra hole had come from I decided that this land could just be a driving range and that's not ideal but i've played courses where the driving range is kind of in the middle of the course that that's acceptable and it wasn't land that was particularly useful for me um so i, I was okay with that then got to the back nine where could it go well i wouldn't mind having something else around the clubhouse i think it's quite cool to have holes around the clubhouse but given where 10 is i really liked 11 and didn't want to give up on that we could have put a short par four in here and then come back this way. But look at all the space that leaves. I feel like that was causing another problem. So we didn't go with that. 12, there's only room for one hole. I looked at, could you go up this way and then back down this way? But that's two really short holes in a row that I didn't think would work. Um, plus we'd already identified that this land was awkward and coming back into this spot was pretty awkward. So I didn't want to come too close to where the third green was. So again, more and more problems. Now, where I ultimately found that was the only place that this hole could go was going to be behind 14, going up this way, and then we moved 15 tee shot out this way. And in the end, that's what I did. So 15 goes to hit. We have, because that was going to be a long par five, par five anyway, we chuck this one behind here somewhere. And renumber to 16. Sorry, 15. Now, at this stage, we go back to our scorecard. And again, all looks pretty well balanced. We're actually sub 7,000 7, at the moment, which is quite cool. Again, reiterating the point from the first one, it's a longer course than it's going to look because of the number of par threes. Par threes will make your course play longer. Um, but I'm okay with that. A little bit gutted, though, to have lost the back-to-back -back par fives, as I really liked those and felt they paired quite nicely together. We also now have both these par fives playing as dogleg lefts, which I quite liked that we had a left and then followed by a right, and I felt those two were matched up really nicely. So 
wasn't such a fan of that. And 15 is very much a, uh, we need another hole. Let's just chuck it down there. And that was kind of all I really had. So that's where we, that's where we were. At this stage, I feel this routing is better balanced um, than the previous one. And we've definitely improved this area, but there's still holes I'm not happy with. Like, I don't really love what's happened to 15 and 16. And I had felt really pro really pleased with 16 beforehand. I'm really disappointed with six because I preferred that up there. I then stumbled into another problem. And this is where all of these changes back like mount up. So we remember two and 13 were in right, roughly the same direction. I said, we we're trying to make those different by whole differences. Then realized that five is going exactly the same direction as well. Now two you can get away with and is fine. Three you can't. So we moved five round to somewhere around here and swapped that over and we put six here was the change that happened. Now, this doesn't feel like the best use of the ravine to me. You'd want to put the green over there somewhere. So it becomes putting the green there, T-shirt over there. And again, I just feel like this has become an awkward little connector hole that isn't really in that great of a position, whereas it was really good beforehand and I was really happy with it. So this is now feeling, this area, having felt great about it, I'm now feeling much less positive about it than I was. Um, uh, but again, routing is all about compromise. We now get a cool look from six, hopefully into seven. If we can clear out some of that or work the angle, there's room for us to maneuver with five. And I'm confident I can find some sort of short four there, but it's not what I ideally liked. Um, so that's where we're going to leave it for episode two. We've seen some of these changes. I still have a few reservations. Um, nine is a connector hole. There's no doubt about that. 12 is kind of a connector hole as well. Um, although it does have the benefit of this really cool green site. Five and six are kind of awkward. I'm happy with four and seven. I think four has a lot of potential with that sort of semi-skyline green. Seven is basically the same hole that it was, but just with a different angle and it's now closer to the ravine. So I think that probably works better. Um, 15, we have no ideas on. The land isn't doing anything particularly exciting either. So there's reservations there. And at this stage, whilst it was better, still wasn't 100% on it. So in the final episode, we're going to look at the final routing, I think, at this stage, um, and discuss what changes there were there, and basically what, what changes made me finally go for this. See you next time.